Uh, ooh, look, look at that. Got some pretty lights. That's Terry's XLR right there. Toy hauler. And now he's coming. <laughs> What's up, brother? Getting ready for the big adventure? Yes, sir. Go Maiden voyage. Right? Let's get the big load up and go. Get it, right? get it hauled. Get it towed. We're going to do it. Me too. <laughs> All right. I can go out there and stay for a little while and then come back. I'm going to... I just want to get a quick one because we'll come do a tour later. Yeah, she's beauty. Looky, looky. Oh. And Terry and I both like blue. Yeah. I was, I'll tell you, being a, a Marine too, I was gonna do the red because they have this in a red, it looked awesome. Oh, yeah. But I already had the other I already had the Harley. I was like, ah, uh, no, I didn't have the Harley yet. Oh, you didn't? I didn't. So, I like blue, that's my favorite color. Mine Ball's too. My favorite color, so. Yeah. Mine too, look at that beauty. Sweet prairie, I'll tell you. Yeah, and that place to park is even almost prettier. <laughs> <laughs> U.S. Marine Corps. Yeah, she's pretty. See how I cover the iron? I'm getting ready to do the iron. I do. I sent you that undercoating stuff too. You did? In the text. Yeah, and you gave me that, that sealant. Yeah, and then you got the seal. You definitely want to seal this up. And check it. Thunderbolt. See, I didn't get to, I went to the RV show. I didn't get to see any of these. At least take a sneak peek of that tank. The tank? Well, how it matches that Thunderbolt. The Super Harley? See, this is how Terry and I met. He was in this truck at the dealership, and I walked up, it was running. I'm like, you gonna buy this? He said, yep. Yep. <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh, that's pretty. Billiard Blue. Billiard Blue. Yeah. Man. F11 all over. This is what I love about a GoPro. I can stand right here and I'm getting the whole thing in there. Oh, Isn't no, that amazing? I have one. No other. But I got the older one. No other. No Did other camera. The, five? the eight. Not, none of the other ones can do that. No other camera I've ever had could do that. Oh, she's a beauty. My original girl, GoPro. I mean, this oh, yeah, the GoPros. It's all the GoPros. Original. Iowa, a Jayco. On a little uh, CRV here. All right, so Terry, your your wife has to be the navigator, right? Supposed to be. How does that supposed to work? Yeah, the wife wife is the navigator. Like, I tell her, hey, I need to make a bathroom, or she has to make a, a restroom call. I said, okay, well, look for the next next rest area because the rest areas are easy to pull in or pull out. Okay. Unless there's a big truck stop then you can go into a big truck stop and it's easy so she sits over here and looks up on her phone oh she pulls up there's rest areas to me on google or whatever and boop and it tells her oh okay we got one uh 10 miles or 22 miles up the road okay and then she hits the gps so there's there. an there's an app for rest areas i think no she goes right into google and says i mean there probably is a rest area app i mean i think this one will tell you too on your garmin uh, hey, hey garmin say a command where's the next rest area Find rest area. Find place. Speak the name of the place. Rest area. Searching for rest area. There it goes. Select a line number. Well, that wow. Works. But those are behind us. Yeah, I get you, but still. So now scroll. you scroll. Scroll down. That's the Garmin 780, by the way. We're just trying to learn how to use it for the wifey there you go 63 miles so the next one 63 miles whitney texas yeah the next one's 60 63 miles whitney texas i just tried that i didn't know it was going to do it i yeah, said i didn't either. That's hey hey garmin and it opened it woke woke up yeah That's but she usually goes on her phone and looks up where the rest area is at and i'm like oh okay and then she hits on her phone 
uh, go to. Start our location to there, and then she keeps an eye on it. All right, hey, it's coming up the next 10 miles. Okay, cool. And then, hey, we got three miles out or whatever. And then here it is. Oh, I got it. So I make sure I'm over on that far right lane so we can get off. And then at the same time, you know, we'll let the dog out. Dog can go potty. If it's get towards lunch, she'll make us a lunch, and then we'll take back off on the road. But they have to help watch the, the GPS too, right? Because sometimes that? you're. Oh yeah, yeah. They they watch the GPS too. Like sometimes, like we had the deal back there about the upper and lower going through. Town. Right. Yeah. The Garmin. Say a command. <laughs> the RV monitor GPS. map <laughs> GPS was saying take this route, but the truck was saying to take this other route. Right. The truck was saying to take the lower one and the RV, RV Garmin was saying to take the upper Say one. Command. The <laughs> RV GPS was saying to take this one. And we were like, oh, and I see, that's what stresses we're, you out. We're laughing, Bethany, because every time he says Garmin, it picks up. It, it picks up and wants to ask what we want. <laughs> so she'll look at it and figure things out. You still out there, baby? Beth. Oh shit, I think we lost them. As we are now, Terry and I, we were coming from Corpus to Dallas and we just passed Austin to let you know where we are. My wife is way past San Antonio from Corpus Christi going to El Paso. As I said, we're going back there, but she's got to go there first. Terry and I are going to pick up the rig. Terry's a veteran as far as pulling. Um, he has a, a little bit more experience. Her, yeah, <laughs> as I showed you earlier, he has a 44 foot toy hauler and a F450. So he's going with me on my maiden voyage to just, you know, help out. He could be a super navigator, help me, and then also as I learn to drive and pull this thing, because it's a beast. Yeah. It is a beast. I usually pull mine to Montana. Or go you be, to Rio yeah, River, you to Guadalupe. Montana, so. all, Wyoming, all around there, right? Yeah, Montana, Wyoming, Colorado. So make the deals and explaining about it's where you, the interstates where you kind of want to hang most of your driving. If you're going to be going on the two lane roads, especially, you definitely want to make sure you pre check the route on your Google, on your computer, and that. And then you can zoom in and if they're going to be around to check for any overhanging the road trees. And when, yeah, that's what you're saying. Check the route. When you check the route, you pull it up and then pull it up. I think you were, you were showing me you go to satellite view and then you zoom yeah, go in. Go to satellite and view then, and zoom it in. And you can see. And then go down and, and see what the road looks and like. And that'll tell you if it's a big two lane or four lane road and you can scroll and follow the and path that way path. he also showed me something else what he said in the rv parks because rv parks you can zoom into the park and, and before you get there and see if there's any overhanging trees because you'll see the shadows or the tree will cover up the road gotcha gotcha he was showing me too you take it zooming in and he he looks and makes sure because you know they take a snapshot of these things but he sees a freight truck on that path is a little bit at least you know that yeah that he, you see a box truck semi box truck then you know you're good because he's he's up at uh, 13, 14 feet, so they're usually good. Are they about 14 feet? Yes, they're usually 13, six or some of Because that's where that's where I got to measure and then myself. That's why he's now you got an oil tanker like that, he's down probably around 12. Because we're all a little different once we hook up. You just got to yeah. you just got to like measure, that, right? Like that big guy right there, he's he's roughly around 12, but the back of his boom is up at 13. And that said 19.1 on that bridge. So every bridge will have right. their height on it? All the bridges will have the height on it. It's a federal law or whatever. So especially on the interstates. Even like you're, like we went to Billings, Montana. And it was saying to give me this route. Well, I had to follow this route to get back into the truck route to get on the, the truck route. And There's a speed trap ahead. See, that was Google and did it that. Took, it took me under this railroad underpass. And I was like, oh, and you can see some of the where rigs have hit it. You were telling me how cool Cabela's is if you're a member. Yeah, if, if you're members of Cabela's, and, well, I think right there for Sam's Club, but the Cabela's, they have a lot of RV dump stations, and you can do the overnight camp, and then, but, you know, you do the courteous thing. If you're going to overnight camp there, stay there, go into the Cabela's and, you not know, to buy anything, but go in there, at least look around, maybe buy some, 
Like I always go in the alley buy. I like black liquor. So it's I not hard that. to buy something. No, Cabela's. you can buy something. That's, <laughs> you know, when you're, when you're like, a hunter, that's, that's yeah. your favorite store. <laughs> type thing. But you go and you say, "Hey, I'm a member." You know, yeah. I'm, well, I'm, you, you have to be a member because a lot of them will have a dump station, but you have to have a code or whatever to get it open to put it. Your but membership you get, code? No, they give you a code inside. Oh, you so go inside. You say, "I'm a member." Can I get it? You push it in the machine and it goes. Terry, you were telling me you don't go RV park to RV park. You you stay along the route, right? Oh yeah, like we go from here to Montana. My my main spot is Montana. That's, we take four days. We stop at rest areas. I pull off in the big rest area. Got a bathroom, and then they got the parking spots there for semi trucks and RVs with trailers. So that's where I go in and park in there and stay there. Either you I might you pull to one side or another so you could open a slide. Yeah, I pull. Both my slides open a little bit. It depends how much room it shows between the lines. Like, see how the semi has room between his lines? Sure. He's a little wider than you are on your RV. Mm -hmm. So you can pull your slides out, but just don't go over those lines. Stay on your side of the line. So lines. you pull in the middle and pull them both out. I pull them so both it depends out on your rig and what it. Okay, so some might want to go the left. Some will have a semi there, and you might be a semi here. So you know when you come on in, you know you just pull in and watch your rig and pull in, go and get it straight. Even if you have to back up a little bit. Get it straight, pull your slides out. Sometimes if you see the guy, hey, you mind if I, nah, you'll never have no problem. You won't have no problem. And they tell you that, you know, that they're on the road all the time. So pull the slides out, put your steps down, get in there. But a lot of times, even at night though, I'd like to take and push my slides back in. Not all the way, but put them back in a little bit. Do they have to come all the way out and then back in or can you just stop no, you, it? Wherever it stops, you can come You can back stop, in. Yep. stop it wherever you want it. Because ours are hydraulic cylinder too. Because you were telling me one the has voltage. to come out before the other one does. One will come well, out. It, it does that because it's the hydraulic pressure. Where is it? Oh, there she is. Looky, looky. Most of them got them on the doors. There's that toolbox. That's Twenty-four thousand. Right, Twenty-four thousand. Let Jason also here. How much is the hitch brake? Uh, it, it ain't gonna have that on there. It's gonna have. No, I don't think it puts it on the. Well, I don't there. see the dry weight though. That's why I wish I could get in that door. I can. No, that's twenty thousand dry. Oh, twenty thousand. Yeah, nine nine thousand, uh, but 20, twenty thousand pounds. Not thought you'd be about twenty dry. And then the hitch is was that 30, 39, 40? It's not gonna, gonna have that on there. Yeah, the kingpin. That's talking. Oh, no, that's, that's just that's the cargo. That's just saying your cargo capacity, you your pin weight. Hell yeah, look at those. I got that's a little bit more cleaning up. How about oh, yeah. They ain't fully done yet. Oh, yeah. XR Thunderbolt. Yeah, I don't want to look at it too hard until it's clean. I'm going to come back tomorrow. Here we are. Pick up the rig. You like my fashion? Hmm? I look fashionable? All right. The maiden voyage, the picking up day. No, no, no. It is a. Oh, yeah, it is. Tell me the, on that email, uh, you know the red link over my name? So click here to do credits. Fill that in, and when I. You gotta be Shane. What's up, brother? <laughs> and let me come back to uh, work. Half time, right? 
At least I'm back. Alternating days, right? Kinda, kinda. How's the wife? She stay calm through all this? She don't want me here, but no. I don't care. Okay. Yeah, I understand. We're gonna pick it up. Ryan's supposed to have me all set. I, I stopped by yesterday and he- So you saw that bad boy? I did. I didn't want to look too hard because it wasn't pretty. It wasn't shined up yet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Nice to meet you. I'm just admiring your camera. <laughs> hey, Rhino. Yes, sir. Hey, it's here. Oh, oh hell. <laughs> you got my damn poop holes ho holder in yet, man? He didn't order my damn poop holes holder. You didn't? Hey, sorry bastard, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Up here, just bull it gets slow, and as it slows down, the business slows down, their brain slows down. That's what happens. They're like, yeah, I don't know, I might just dip a little more of this snuff, and maybe it'll find one of the parts. Not yet. We'll see, just let's see what, excuse me, how you doing, man? I'll see you a little bit, Shane. All right, Steve, I appreciate you, brother. Good to meet you, man. Did they get it clean? He's, uh, he's about to... Oh, he's pulling up. Ooh, look, look at that. Got some pretty lights. Turn on all lights. Let's see, check all the lights. They put a they put a big old brag sticker on there. Explore USA, yeah, yeah. Mesquite, Texas. Mm -hmm. Man, that's a pretty blue. They put my caps on. Yeah. How you doing? Pretty good, Mr. Petey. Yeah. How you doing? How you doing, I'm man? Tim. Good to meet you, Tim. Meet you. Your Shake your hand, but we're all coroned yeah, out. I know. That's way, that's, they, they won't even let us go inside with the customer inside anymore. Really? Yeah, so I'm going to have to kind of stand at the doorway and, and explain everything to you. Okay. Yeah, what if we, why don't, why don't we just wear masks and then we can go in there? It's my, our company policy will not allow. Okay. As a matter of fact, we, every time we have a conference call, they repeat it. Social distancing and make sure we're not going inside the unit. So how are you going to check out all the stuff in the trailer? Uh, I'm just going to kind of stand there and kind of explain it to you. You have to ask questions and I'm just going to have to peek my head in there and just kind of explain it to you. That sucks. Hope it all works. Yeah, I've been, I mean, that's why I've, every PD I've done in the last two weeks has been like that. Just okay. Cool. Having to explain everything as people go in there and yeah. I'll well, let's the let's do the outside first then. Yeah, we can drive this one down. That can get the garage out through. Yep, absolutely. All right, so I'd like to start the front door and uh, we'll work our way around here and then we'll let y'all go to the inside. And All right. See what happens from there on. Entry door. Bottom one locks the deadbolt. Top one locks the handle. Okay. Uh, your keys are as follows. Uh, So the, I have two black ones for the front entry door. These two black ones are going to be for your rear entry door. Okay. These two silver ones right here that are funny shape, uh, they're going to go for your ramp door, the lock on the ramp door. Okay. All right. Um, these gray ones right here are going to go for your compartment doors. Okay. So there's two copies of each? Yeah, there's two. Uh, okay. Two and then these uh, silver ones right here, I believe, is going to go to... Uh, fuel, fuel station. Yeah, I think... I'm not sure about the fuel station. It's going to be like a little, uh, maybe the a uh, little small compartment door for like the refrigerator or maybe the power cord door or something like that. But we'll, okay. uh, we'll take a look. I'll show you exactly where they go. On the steps, they can kind of lift up and go into place. Uh, they are adjustable at the bottom. They got little pins right here that you can pull out and the legs slide up and down. Okay. Little cotter pins in there? I need them. Yeah, just regular little straight pins. Oh, okay. Yeah, I bought those. I upgraded those. Yeah, the steps. Yeah, uh, in the back, I think. Uh, yeah, I bought those. Right. I didn't know if that was going to be a mistake adding them to the back, too. But Well, I almost... Uh, I've just seen so many people, almost, where they only have it in the front? Uh -huh. You almost wasn't sure it was going to fit? I wasn't, I wasn't sure if it was going to... The tool, uh, toolbox. Mm. Because, um, well, for one thing, these steps, they will not go up or down without running the slide in. Okay. All the way. Just to let you know, because this door's got to be wide open for the steps to go up. Okay. So 
I, I got it. It puzzled me at first. I was like, oh man, this ain't gonna be able to work. Right. And then I realized, well, the solution is we have to run the slide in run the slide. in order to get the steps down. So slide has to be in. In. Correct. So in other words, drop this before I pull out my slide. Yes. Okay. Definitely. And then we'll have to run the slide in before we can actually pick those steps up. Gotcha. Um, whenever you are messing with the steps and adjusting the legs, try to get it as low as possible to the ground. In other words, um, if they're up too high, is what's going to happen when you try to shut the door, it's going to rub right here. So what we want to do is we want to adjust these legs and try to get If the right. train drops down here a lot and your legs are all the way out, you have to put blocks on them. They're, they're pretty long, guys. They stand out pretty good. I don't think they'll... Oops, see there? Mm -hmm. Can't hardly get them up with the door there, but uh, they'll extend out. I don't know about that long. Oh, wow. No, okay. we don't want the steps to be up too high like this. Oh, not up too high. Not, right. Okay. You won't What's going to happen is when you shut the door, it's going to scream. Oh, I got you. Got you. Got you. Just be aware of that. I see it. I see it. I point that out to a lot of people because we got a unit out there that they, uh, a mobile suite that they, it's a show unit, and they had the door closed. And that's one thing we also don't want to do. Uh, we don't want to have the door closed, steps down, and to the auto level. Because what happens is it drops that front end and it pushes the steps up inside the door. So we got a unit out there with doors, jam auto level, level everything. Yeah. So, so you're telling me the stairs need to be up? Or the doors open when we auto level. Okay. Most likely you're going to have you it closed into auto level. I should auto level before I go inside, is what you're saying. As soon as you disconnect yeah. from your truck, you auto level. And then before I do anything before else. You okay. slides you, out, before you open your doors or any of that stuff. And then I need, to dro I need to drop this first before I even run the slides out. At least right. at least yeah. this one. Might as well do both of them. Right, might as well. But you kind of do anyway because you're going to come inside. So you just... But yeah. yeah normally but I can do the slides from my phone though, right? Yeah. But yeah, when you always want to go down. inside. Check to make sure nothing fell off to get within those slides. Otherwise, it's gonna right. Then jack up your wall. Gotcha. I always do that before I run slides in or out. In or out. You just go check, make sure everything's clear, and you're not gonna scrape nothing. Make sure there's no nails or screws or stuff, rocks on the floor, and that's gonna scrape on the lid or anything like that. Okay. And if you're at like a hole, like you're at over the tree, where you're gonna be at. Mm -hmm. Before you roll these slides, then you gotta crawl up on the roof and make sure that the tree branches on the roof. Oh sure. Tree branches, pine cones. Mm -hmm. uh, I had those little, uh, guys, those little cockleberries, those those spiky cockleberries <laughs> like that. Man, and he had like 20 of them all in That's there. a Texas thing, though, damn. The, what are the maintenance on the hubs? Because I don't have the oil bath hubs, I saw. No, they, no. Um, actually, they started doing away with those, the oil bath. Did they? Yeah, because uh, what was happening was the uh, the plastic cap would get a crack in it. The oil would drain out. Oh. And then they would, they so it's not that I got less. I got the newer you got, hub yes. they went with. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. I was like, I didn't get the oil bath. Yeah, you don't. You didn't, I don't want it. Yeah, you don't want the oil bath. We were getting them brand new on the lot where they were already cracked. Okay, so what I have now and what's the maintenance grease. on? They're grease. They're just grease. Uh huh. But are they sealed? How often you got to yeah. grease those? Yeah, they're they're sealed. I mean, they're good ones, right? They're that's what I mean. They're yeah, not, yeah, you're good. I've seen some. They just. That's how I got no, them. every um. Uh, you you want to repack them every eight thousand miles. Damn, yeah. that's quick. Do what? Eight thousand miles ain't shit. No, it ain't really. Oh thousand, my god. As far as packing, that means take the wheel off and take it back off and then repack. Yep. Mm -hmm. Damn. Pull the wheel off, take the bearings out, clean them up, repack them full of grease, put new seals in there. That's all how often. Okay, I need to learn to do that myself. What? How often do you go in there with the grease and just work the grease? Uh, that really it doesn't do much for you. Uh, just putting the grease in there because it's, I mean, it can, but you have to actually spin the wheel. As you're putting the grease in there, otherwise it doesn't get the bearings. It just squirts in a little cavity between the two bearings. So, um, I had to look up a YouTube video for that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's way to do every 8,000 miles that, that behooves me to get a bucket and some damn cleaner and learn to do that myself because I can do that right there in the RV park because yeah. I can't be bringing in every 8,000 miles. Uh, so, it's what, it's what you can do is get your grease gun, hook it up to the grease cert, uh, jack the wheel up off the ground as you're pumping, as someone's pumping it. Have somebody spinning the tire. How you jack them? Anyway. Uh, you roll it up on the blocks you buy. There's a little teeter totters, you can, right? You can do that, or you can put a, um, a jack underneath, a, a floor jack, jack. Yeah, or a ball jack underneath that, uh, right up here by the axle. Close oh, to the right. hub you can get, uh, and then jack it up. Okay. I got the Goodyear H rated. Yeah, so you got really good tires. Uh, always want to check your air pressure before you. What is the pressure on these? I believe these are 125. We need to know for sure. And the torque, if you would, on the bolts. I need that. Uh, uh, I believe uh, 110 foot pounds of torque. 110 foot pounds of torque. Yep. Uh, all right. 25 PSI cold. 
125 cold. So if it ain't the sun side. Yeah. The reason I haven't put these on yet is because these cameras don't fit this hole. Uh-oh. So what we'll do is we'll either put it underneath it or right above it. If that's okay with you. Where do you think? But below is that, is that too close to the seal? No, no, we usually put them. I want it there right then. Because it gives you a little bit more clearance. On yeah. Your yeah, right there. Uh, now I want to put Christmas lights on this thing. Where'd I tap that in? <laughs> I would say uh, probably just that one ten plug. Step right light. <laughs> <laughs> when you turn that step light on, because it's got a step light right there, right? Oh, there's a one ten plug. Yeah, there's a one ten plug right here. But step light uh, there. when you get up in your step. Right yeah, up there it is. Right up now see it was it does show when you pull these down like yours are oh oh y'all just left the no, damn y'all left the stairs yeah mm -hmm. yeah otherwise it doesn't have a big cavity right there oh gotcha but, until i get another box you can always sell it and put your own box in there yeah how hard was that box to put in Not just hard. a couple bolts right Not yeah bolts it right in it wasn't that hard you just got to uh, the hardest part is getting these out they, uh, they just bolt right in, and then uh, once you slide your box in there, you open up the door and put your other bolts in there. Gotcha. That way it's all, uh, once you lock your door, nobody can unscrew it and take it. Okay. What's that thing that looks like a sled? That's your spare tire carrier. Okay. So right here, um, it has a little wing nut looking thing right there. You unscrew that, you pull the bars all the way out to here, and then your spare tire's right there, you can take it off. Oh, it'll slide, it's a slide, it'll yep. slide my tire to me. Mm -hmm. Nice. Oh, so the tire slides underneath you. Yep. Nice. So now that heavy dude enough to put another tire on there? Um, you would have to have a whole nother, because it's got the, the mount, it's actually right. welded to the bars and everything. You can so have you a welder make another mount. Probably. It will hold it. Yeah. That'd sure. be nice. Yeah. And, uh, I've never had to do blowout damage from a Goodyear tire. So what's in my... Yeah, the Goodyear... Oh, these yeah. just... Is this is this heated? I mean, do they they put an open one to keep this temp up? Um, not actually in here, but inside here. Yes. That's what I mean. Yeah. So this won't freeze in I here, like right? Sliding door. Yeah, yeah. It kind of it has some of the um, heat will radiate through here. Yes. See this little hose right here, that top skinny one. Yes. It goes all the way over there. When we go to the other side, I'll show you. All right. And it actually blows hot air on all your plumbing, all your water lines. And all well, that's that what I mean. Stuff. So it'll heat. So if I add some lithiums in here, that's why I'm wondering because it. They can't drop. They don't want to drop below 45. But all you've got to do, if it gets super cold, just give it a slight crack. And let it leak out a little bit. Because this is going to be warm. It's got some. Mine's 40 degrees. It's got a opening up here. In Montana? Yeah. In Mon so one key goes to all bay locks? Yeah. It's, uh, that's nice. Is it proprietary? I mean, is it like, am I, am I going to go open some other DRV with that key? No, no these are. Uh, there's like a hundred different keys. Okay. Oh, good. See, that's the little stuff I don't have to upgrade. It already comes with locked. Other people are locked, but other people on XLR, I got it. They, they could be lucky and catch the right key. This key right oh, here, the 751 key is a real common key. Just about yeah. everybody that has an RV has a 751. Yeah, the little one. And then uh, on some of the um, other models, the compartment door keys are, are uh, the latches are R001, which a lot of people, that's a pretty common key for people. Um, but on these right here, they make them uh, where it's a different key, so no, not everybody's gonna have a key here. Gotcha. Yeah. Unless they got all, all 100 of them. <laughs> all right. I think yeah. the master key. Uh, there's a master Actually, this is a 391, so I think they actually have like a, almost a thousand different keys. So. Cool. Yeah, because that's not hydraulic. It's such a small slide. What are these? Cable slide on this right here, and then those are hydraulic. So cable slide is the lowest? What do you mean lowest? The lowest one you can have? Aaron, Aaron's got this too. No, I mean, it's they're, they're good. Oh, it's cable, good? Yeah, cable slides are good. Okay. Actually, but this, the Swintec is actually the, the one of the, the uh, slides that give people the most problems. Oh. Or I did manually close this. Manual. Okay, so there's uh, inside that's the packet. Inside the packet is this, um, it's a flexible bit, quarter inch, quarter inch hex drive. Okay. Up inside on the back, the motor's up on top. Um, you put that in the back side of the motor and you can use a screw gun to run it in and out. Okay. Use it on a drill bit? <laughs> like a drill? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, then. Okay. How many ACs can I run off of that generator? Off the generator, uh, you can run two ACs. Okay. Does this have the management system where it'll swap between them uh, anyway? 
the power so like i can run all three but then all three run it control system yeah uh yeah well what it does is it shuts shuts things off when you overload your system okay so you can turn all three of them on but if it, it gets overloaded it'll it'll shut one off most of the stuff's pre-wired and all that kind of stuff if you want to do the wi-fi if you want to do satellite all that it's all pre-wired okay for you. so everything makes it real easy everything but so everything but solar right um no, it's got it's got uh pre-wired solar pre -wired for solar too yes. okay nice yep pre-wired yep up on top it you got has these. a solar management or is it just pre-wired just pre-wired it just has wires ran from the roof uh down right behind your control panel uh the wires are ran to a plumbing vent up here it's a fake plumbing vent so you pull that off you got the wires right there you hook up your solar panel you got a set of wires that run down here to where the batteries go to charge the batteries mm -hmm. and that's where you put your monitor so you can see how what you got gotcha. and then there's um wires that run down behind your control panel for a switch so you can actually turn it on and off i got gotcha. you and the, the furnace is is propane right correct 1100 watts okay. they have it on there somewhere Oh, but this is the, but but i also have two heat pumps they uh -huh. told me right so they just um they only do uh they blow from the ac vents down okay this right here blows from the floor up and it's just in there you'll show me i can just swap between furnace or heat pump yeah mm -hmm. okay yeah it'll let you select uh different zone uh zones and, and how you want it to okay it's and so what kind of condition it's called slide out seal conditioner it's okay not, it's a uh, picture you took of mine. We yeah. carry it inside, but uh, it'll uh, recommend that once every three months spray it on it, wipe it off, and that'll keep the uh, sun from beating it up so bad. Okay. Uh, Depends on where I am. Where we are in Corpus, I might do it every month. If your slides are open all the time. Yeah. And the heat's on all the time. That's what I mean. Like you got that tree now. You want to so do it all the, way, all the way around on each, each one of your slide outs. So you got yourself a ladder? Not yet. <laughs> I got to get one of those telescoping ones. They are nice. They're heavy though. The bipolar that sticks thin for that. Alright. Generator. I want have you seen any of the bigger Onans? Like what? Twelve thousand. Uh, like a ten thousand or something. Would it fit in that bay? Generally those are um diesel run on diesel. Yeah, yeah you got more. Yeah. This will run you two think? ACs. It's yeah, it's, that'll run two AC, that's that'll plenty. Run, that'll run your whole coach. It will? Well, not you not can, everything at the same time. No, I yeah. got you, but each one of your ACs pulls about 15 ounces. This right here, it's it's rated. Well, it's see, a, mine, like we're well I'm gonna put some. I'm gonna put some. One runs two ACs on the AC pump, basically, uh -huh. and then the other one it's just the yeah. fans run, mm -hmm. and then it'll switch like it's a little hotter back here. This will kick on, and one of the other two will shut down mm -hmm. and just run the fan to push the air. Well, see, I might add soft starts to these ACs too, and that'll help. That'd help a yeah. lot because that's what'll knock it out is the startup mainly yeah. Mm -hmm. well yeah and your your power management system also will, oh and it can yeah, handle if that if you get more if you start pulling more than uh uh 47 amps something like that it'll start shutting things off okay so, you know what all you know about this particular generator not a damn thing not a dang thing huh all right so it is gas why does it say 30 amp right there you got two two breakers of 30 amps but your control system is only going to let you pull 47 amps it's a 5500 watt generator so i can get 30 instead of it's not sending 50. no no you actually your power is pretty much cut in half actually less than half okay because it's, it's, um, it's what you really have because it's 50 on each leg but right. that's 30 on each leg correct okay but your your power management system is only going to let you pull 47 amps period the total 47 capable. total 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 from both legs that's until i redo that some of bits with all the victron controllers <laughs> okay but i got you because i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna hook it up but you're not gonna have more than that anyhow remember you i'm gonna do yes i am wait oh not from this not from this 50. i get you right so your system's only set 50. Right. two legs of 50. It's two uh, legs of 50. It's really 100, dude, is right. what I'm trying so to tell you. You're getting an actual total of 100 when you plug into your short right. cord. This, you want to get a total of 47. Right. Okay. You take your you take your wattage, 5,500 watt generator, you divide that by your uh, voltage, which is 120 volts, and that gives you how many amps you can pull. Okay. I like this gas on these tour haulers because I got an extra tank. Conan recommends that you start it up once a month and put it under a load and let it run for one hour. One hour, once yeah. a month. So under a full load. So you go in, turn two ACs on, 
and let it run for an hour under under a load. Okay. We but don't want to tell Aaron he hasn't started but 15 hours on his. We don't want it to um, <clears throat> run the generator while we're plugged in on a short cord unless we turn these breakers off right here. If it, that transfer switch will try to connect so, to the generator and it'll, it'll chatter back and forth. So let's say that one more time because that's not like important. Okay. So either yeah. unplug from the 50 or do what? Turn these breakers off right here. And then you can still run it? Yes. But it's not going to run anything. Right. It won't power up nothing in the car. It'll just run. Like It'll just sit there and run. So I'm trying, I'm fixing to start it. But it won't have a load if I do that. So that doesn't go, that won't cure right. my, yeah, but, I got to yeah. run it on a load. Right. So you'll have so to unplug, unplug and then, okay. And then, um, so keep, can, keep those off while I'm on shore yeah. power is if the shore, point of this, right? Turn your <laughs> keep those breakers off while you're on shore power. Right. If yes. you're going to start it up. Right. All you have to do is, but just to, to be safe, break, might as well leave them off until I'm going to use it. Well, um, not necessarily because like say, um, for instance, um, you have a remote start on the inside, you can start it up from the inside. Okay. So if you're out somewhere and the power goes out, it'll just kick you can on. You go inside and start it up and, and you don't okay. have to come out here and pull with the breaker. Can I set that to automatically kick this on? Um, no, it don't, it doesn't have an auto. Start, okay. So. Until I get the Victron. Yeah. Until you get that. that <laughs> That's what I want to get. That's why I got to get I it. I'm just saying. They have a unit. They used to put it in these that had, it was a, it was a uh, inverter converter at the same time. That's what it, Victron is makes. It? Yeah. yeah. And, and switch is in there, but it's that switch that makes it come on automatically. It switch between yeah. shores, switch between this, switch inverter between. Converter? You know, this. Yeah. It, separate, it does, but they're but separate. They're oh, separate okay, okay. Yes. Yeah. So, um, they have them where I think that you could set them to where when the battery, uh, voltage drops below like 11 that's volts. it'll kick it, on yeah it kicks on and starts up but what what does that the battery management system yeah it's got a little you just got to have the right battery yeah. management. And, and it, you can go in there and you can set it up to where you that's can what, i told you it's that battery water management water. that's what so, i thought i don't know a whole lot about them they've only they only put them in units for like a couple of years mm. and then they stop doing it after. it's an upgrade yeah so, so how how is the, the cord long enough to come over here and fill it up with the hose the gas hose no, the two tanks are right next to each other. Oh yeah, I've got the tanks there. I don't come fill it here. Okay, duh. All right, so uh, I'm slow, but I eventually get it. I'll give you a little background on the or uh, info on the generator as far as maintenance goes. Uh, you fill the oil right here. It's got a petcock right here with the hose to it that you can get to right here. Okay. So when you come change to the drain oil, it, just slide your little bucket right here. Open that up, let it drain out. Nice. It does have an oil filter right milk here. Jug. Empty milk yep. jug. Yeah, that'll work. It does have an oil filter right here that screws in right here at the bottom. Just okay. Like the automotive oil filter. So, um, all that's pretty easy to do right there. Okay. Um, so what kind of oil? Just a little. 10W30? Uh, what? 15, uh, 1540. Oh, there it, it says 1540. On, it says it right it, there. Yeah, it depends on what elevation you're at and things like that. Okay. So, and the temperature. But, um, and then uh, your air filter is right behind here. So, they change your air filter every uh, 450 hours, change your oil every 150 hours. Um, and where's the, my hour meter? It's on the inside. Okay. On the, by your remote start on the inside. Uh, this generator, if it runs too fast, too slow, puts out too much voltage, too little voltage, and that stuff, it'll turn itself off. This and, looks like a lot of wasted room. Um, kind of, sort of. How hot does this thing get? Not very hot. Well, this unit itself is doesn't it's radiate heat. No. Everywhere else, it's but it, yeah, itself, it's um, it gets hot inside here, but everywhere else it doesn't really. Get okay. Hot. It's got the heat protective shield there or something. Because I could, here, I could put something light up there and it's light and soft, maybe. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can put something up there and, okay. and on top of it, it won't, it won't damage it or anything. Okay. Is your lithium batteries up there? Um, I probably would do it. Uh, just because this is not vented. Lithium don't have to be vented. Oh, they don't? Nope. You can put them underneath the bed. I well, could build a rack and then oh, I'd do it. I'd put a rack up there and then put them. I'm thinking they could put a rack across. Yeah, I could put a rack across. It's just super thin. And all uh, this does is it's just a, um, yeah, I got a box you. to keep the vapors and stuff you. from going up inside. Right, there. Still got the steel. Right, but if right. I went back there and reinsured that, anyway, yeah, let's, let's stay on point. All right, so um, we don't want to run it very long without the door being on there. Okay. Because uh, it will overheat if we do that. Okay. So uh, what it does is it pulls air in here, blows it across the motor and generator and exhaust and blows it out over here. Oh, uh, okay. If we don't have that door in there, it doesn't work properly. Gotcha. All right, so when you get ready to start up, we're going to hit the timer button. We're going to hold that down um, for about three or four seconds. Timer pump. Mm. I don't think they put fuel in it. Fuel in the tanks? Yeah. They, we usually put some in the generator to turn it up. Um, we got some gas here. We'll, 
I'll get my gas, put some gas in real quick. All right. Is my red light on? Yes. You're good.